Have you ever heard of the Mara Salvatrucha, aka the MS-13? Well, if you haven't, I can't think of anyone better to do the honors. But MS-13 is particularly violent. They don't like shooting people because it's too quick. It's too fast. These men once carried out over 60 successful hits in just one day. And they are the ones that keep the FBI up at night. Today, I'm going to dive deeper into the Mara Salvatrucha, showing you who their highest ranking hitmen are. Douglas Ramirez Ferreira. What were your desires at the age of 20? For some, it's social media likes and followers. Others, maybe a dream job, romance, or of course, money. But for Douglas Ramirez Ferreira, who intelligently has no photos of himself online, he wanted to become one of the top leaders of the MS-13. Quite ambitious, if you ask me. The only problem was, the only way to upgrade your rank in the deadly gang is to either kill, molest, or take control in an interesting way. Most importantly, a way interesting to the leaders. And not just that, you have to have proof. That is why Ferreira and the rest of his gangmates, Almeida, Zelaya Martinez, Ronald Herrera Contreras, Henry Zelaya Martinez, and Pablo Velasco Barrera decided to chop two boys into tiny pieces while taking offensive videos of the savage scene. The victims are 17-year-old Edwin Escobar Mendez from Falls Church and 14-year-old Sergio Arita Trimino from Alexandria. However, when the police found their bodies in 2016, they looked nothing like the boys in the photos. Mendez had been chopped into a hundred pieces with a machete and a pickaxe. One of his legs also appeared to be broken in the shallow pit where he was buried. When the prosecutor asked why he appeared this way, they said they had to cut off his legs so he would fit in the hole they dug for him. As for Trimino, he was stabbed 250 times in the back, all the while asking them why he was being killed. They also broke many of his bones so he could fit in the trash bag they put his body in before he was eventually also buried in a shallow pit. Ferreira is the youngest on this list, and he was sentenced to life imprisonment with the rest of the gang leaders. And while Ferreira's crime is undoubtedly quite gruesome, the next name on the list makes him look like a saint. Yulan Adonai Archaga Karyas. Yulan Adonai Archaga Karyas, also known as Alexander Mendoza, but popularly referred to as Porky because of how he looks, is the only assassin seen to have escaped only four minutes after he was arrested. Brace yourself, because what you're about to see is what you believe only happens in video games, like a scene from Grand Theft Auto, but this is no make-believe. Porky was arrested in February of 2020, brought in by heavily armed police officers. The security man at the door can be seen greeting the officers as they stumble in. Now, another group of armed men who appear to be policemen also come in with their weapons, immediately positioning themselves for what was about to happen. After a while, another police officer appears to bring in another criminal, but with no force this time, like he is being led inside. Everything appears to be back to normal, but the armed men are somewhat uneasy, going back and forth around the hallway. But the tides soon change when a man distracts the security officer, and the armed men point guns at the staff and visitors of the office. If you are somewhat confused by what you just saw, it's because this operation was so smooth, and Porky's men almost achieved perfection. They came in dressed exactly like the police. They managed to confuse the cops, then switched their boss with the willing prisoner who was covered in black from head to toe. Their goal was to free Yulan Porky Karyas, and nothing was going to disrupt the mission. While the men kept the surroundings safe, Porky appeared a minute and a half later holding an AK-47. After the army noticed that they were being tricked, a shootout began between the gang and the soldiers. But in the end, Porky walked out a free man, his army right behind him, dressed in police uniforms. And all of this had taken place in less than four minutes after he was brought in. Porky was not only a hitman for the MS-13, but one of its top leaders. Many even regard him as the leader of the MS-13 in Honduras. The FBI is offering $5 million for any information that can lead to the arrest of this man, which is even more than the $2 million that was the bounty for Pablo Escobar. Linez Diablita Escobar who said all hitmen have to be men. Nicknamed MS-13's Little Devil, Linez Diablita Escobar was charged for the murder, or more appropriately, for the chopping up of four boys her age. Yes, four. And Escobar was just 22 at the time. But if you're wondering if she's related to the kingpin, Don Pablo Escobar, that killed 4,000 people in his lifetime, no, she's not. But if she was, it wouldn't be that surprising. Diablita, a nickname she found for herself, is Spanish for Little Devil. She was a 22-year-old Long Island woman who worked secretly for the cult, helping them to lure in boys who needed to be punished. What's worse is that Diabilita is the judge and jury that tells the executioners who needs to be punished next. In this scenario, she decided that four young men would be her next victims. And what crimes did these boys commit? They simply took the wrong selfies. The unfortunate victims were 16-year-old Justin Yivikura, 18-year-old Jefferson Villalobos, 18-year-old Jorge Tigre, and 20-year-old Michael Lopez. The four boys took photos of themselves faking the gang sign to look for hot girls on social media because they were members of the 
rival 18th Street gang. She asked the boys to join her in a wooded area in Central Islip Park to smoke, and there, the four young men saw their last glimpse of this world. They were attacked and bludgeoned to death with machetes, axes, knives, and tree limbs. The MS-13 members and Diabilita were all arrested and punished for their crimes. During the trial, prosecutors also stated that Diabilita licked their blood off their lips after the four men had been butchered. And when the judge asked Diabilita if she was forced or tricked into luring the boys to the park, she said, no, I did it myself. I'm telling you, I did it myself. So now is my turn. Escobar was sentenced to life imprisonment. Miguel Angel Tobar Nicknamed the Hollywood Kid, Miguel Angel Tobar is one of the few hitmen who would come out and say he has killed 56 people in his lifetime. Tobar said, I've broken 56, about 6 women and 50 men. Among the men, I include the f***s because I've killed the two f***s. And that's because he did. But he didn't just kill people for the gang, he also killed people in the gang. He shot three members of MS-13 in the head without remorse, taking their lives in one breath after they killed his brother. Tobar also helped in the killing of a young boy named Caballo. According to various sources, Tobar discovered Caballo secret and lured him to a rural area of Atikizaya together with other MS-13 members. They killed him. Caballo died without arms, without legs, without tattoos, and when he didn't have any of those left, they still managed to torture him for a few more minutes. It was that day that Tobar, who was known in his clique as Clown, changed his name to El Nino, the boy. Because when they took Caballo's heart out, he had an epiphany, and it felt as though he had just given birth to a child. In other words, Miguel Angel Tobar was no angel. He was an assassin, and everyone knew this, including the police. But that isn't what made the Hollywood kid popular. It was in fact that he also became an informant. He helped the police arrest 30 MS-13 major leaders, including Jose Guillermo Solito Escobar, known as El Extraño, which is English for strange one, and Jose Antonio Terran, popularly known as Chepe Furia, one of the first MS-13 members in the United States. Chepe Furia was also a founder of the Fulton Loco Salvatrucha gang and the Hollywood Loco Salvatrucha gang in El Salvador. So it wasn't much of a surprise when Tobar was shot in the streets towards El Portillo in San Lorenzo, El Nino called six bullets. He was shot in his back, behind one of his ears, his side, chest, and two bullets went straight through his head. And just like that, a legendary hitman became a hit. El Nino ended the lives of over 50 people, and he did that in pure cold blood. But even Tobar is still not as revered as the next name on this list. Borromeo Enrique Henriquez Borromeo Enrique Henriquez is behind almost a thousand successful, clean, and unsolved assassinations. And he did all of this behind bars. While others pointed their guns, Enriquez pointed his finger. Also called Diabilito de Hollywood, or Little Hollywood Devil, Enriquez has been in prison since 1998. He was originally convicted along with a few other MS-13 gang members for murdering two people, Roberto Carles Hernandez and Jose Virgilio Gonzalez. But while Enriquez was in jail, he did not spend his 30 years just serving time. Enriquez devoted his time to going up in the MS-13 ranks until he was in control. And I'm not talking about controlling a few gangs or a few hundred armed professionals. I'm talking about him being one of the most powerful members of the Ranfla Nacional, the MS-13's board of directors. Also, because he was in prison, he had the free will to do anything without having to worry about being arrested. Not only did he have control over multiple gangs in El Salvador, the US, and so many other regions, but he was also part of the Ranfla Nacional that decided for the MS-13 assassins where to go, what to do, who to kill, and when. This group, since their establishment, have been involved in organized terrorism, human smuggling, sex trafficking, drug trafficking, kidnapping, murder, assassinations, blackmail, and extortion. They are also known to kidnap, shoot down, or even cut into pieces any law enforcement officers. In another case, they gave the green light, or in other words, ordered the assassination of an FBI agent in El Salvador, who was assigned to the MS-13 case. Luckily for the FBI agent, the hit was unsuccessful. But even if Borromeo stood alone, he was still so powerful, powerful enough that he had ties with the most notorious drug leader of the Sinaloa cartel, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. And that's not all. The little Hollywood devil was the public face of the gang, even from the prison cell. He was so confident in himself that he'd ask for press meetings and public hearings so that he could boldly communicate the requests of the MS-13, a violent and utterly dangerous group of fearless executors. He'd communicate their demands to the government like some non-profit organization. If you don't think this guy is a top hitman, I don't know who is. And just like the little Hollywood devil, he is a woman who has also spent her entire life in prison. Joseline Ramirez Born in 1998, Ramirez joined the MS-13 gang when she was just 13 and has been entangled in the world of crime ever since. She admitted to helping the gang end the life of a policeman in El Salvador, luring him into the woods so that they could kill him. They shot him in the head, she said. At the same age, she was also knowledgeable enough to know about rival gangs and what to do with them. She assisted in shooting down a rival gang member in her town and quickly rose through the ranks. But then she became inactive for a while, only seen in her selfie photos either posing with the MS-13 hand sign or showing off her gun, or sometimes both. None 
Nonetheless, as soon as Ramirez rejoined, she was assigned other tasks in another department of the gang, given two clear job descriptions. The first thing she was tasked with was to case the business for heists. Big role, if you ask me. Casing the business means she would be in charge of ensuring the heist is well planned, ready for execution, and without any complications. I'm talking about weighing the risks and the benefits, capturing the reasons any attack would be successful, maybe even arranging the escape plan after the heist. Maybe Ramirez did not call the shots, not yet, but at 20, she definitely knew how to plan a real-life heist, and her second job description was even more exciting, to wipe down the guns. It's almost impossible not to use guns in a heist. Even though there weren't too many casualties, thanks to her amazing planning, the guns which would be used could still be linked back to the gang during investigations. So Ramirez was in charge of cleaning the guns with a special solution so that the fingerprints would disappear, like they were never there. But she didn't stop at the guns, she did the same for the counters, doors, and anything any of the gang members touched during the raid. You could say that Ramirez was the reason any of those heists were successful, or that the other hitmen stayed hidden. She covered their footprints, and she did a fine job six times. While one of the heists got the gang over $120,000, unfortunately for them, another one cost them a member during a police car chase. And no, it wasn't because Ramirez failed at her job, she was too good to fail. The police just happened to be around when they were escaping. It was a miscalculation of human unpredictability. And during the chase, one of the gang's vans skidded off the road and ended up in a bush. One of the gang members, some sources say it's the driver, tried to escape on foot, but the police made sure he could never escape again. Shortly after this incident, Ramirez was sentenced to 95 years in prison. This means that Ramirez would be 105 years old before she can ever be a free woman again. Yikes. Even as she remains behind bars, her reputation as the woman that did her job so well for the MS-13 still stands out, and that's what earns her a place on this list. But while Ramirez didn't need a weapon to make her impact, the next name on this list definitely knows how to use a piece. Miguel Angel Lopez Abrego Miguel Angel Lopez Abrego did not just know how to use a weapon. He once held the heart of the man he killed before tossing it into the grave with the unrecognizable remains. Nicknamed the Shy One, he was also in a quest to move up the ranks, and the only way to do so was to get his hands dirty and bloody. Sometime between December 2016 and March 2017, he got his chance, and he was not ready for any mess-ups, so he went all in. As soon as he got the order to kidnap, he prepared the grave, and asked his other homies and gang friends to bring the man over. Immediately, he set his eyes on the man. Reports showed that that he beat the man, choking him out until he was no longer conscious. Lopez Abrego confessed that he made the first move, driving the knife through the chest of the 35-year-old man. He confessed that he did it more than 100 times, going back in again and again, confirming his spot in the next seat up the ranks. They also beheaded the man after his face had been disfigured from countless slashes of the dagger, leaving him unrecognizable. Lopez Abrego also confessed that he took out the man's heart before he threw it into the shallow grave with the rest of the dismembered remains. Lopez almost got away with it, as it took the police five months before they found him. Miguel Angel Lopez Abrego was sentenced to 25 years in prison for a disturbing homicide and an active involvement with the MS-13 gang. Still, there are many Miguel Angels trying to make waves in the hitman industry, and Miguel Angel Portillo is one of them. Miguel Angel Portillo Miguel Angel Portillo is a dangerous and professional assassin that wasn't even noticed until a state of emergency was declared in El Salvador. The Salvadoran government created a special force in March 2022 specifically for the hunt and arrest of MS-13 members. Over 64,000 suspected gang members were arrested. During Portillo's arrest, he was taken in with a crowd of over 2,000 El Salvadorian gang members, either from the MS-13 or the 18th Street Gang, a longtime rival of the MS-13. Before the raid and the mass arrest, Portillo roamed the streets of El Salvador a free man, taking all orders and moving up the ranks for his many successful hits. He wasn't in the spotlight, and he certainly liked to live with a low profile. But when the law caught up with him, his atrocities were opened for the world to see, and there were a lot to see. Portillo was found guilty of 22 different disturbing homicides, all involving shootings, beatings, stranglings, and most of all, manslaughter. He was also convicted of four conspiracy charges to commit murder, and he also has one attempted murder charge under his name. So you can easily see just how immersed Portillo is in the business of annihilation. All he needs is a name and an address and he'll be there. He didn't even need to know the reason why anyone wanted the victim dead. He did not ask questions. And the judge assigned to the case made sure that the only faces Portillo would be seeing are those of his fellow convicts. He was sentenced to 945 years in prison. Portillo would have to stay alive for as long as Gandalf or Sauron did if he was ever going to be a free man ever again. Well, he would have company. He would be in prison with 2,500 other deadly gang members for the rest of his life. But just like Portillo, our next hitman was unnoticed until the raid of March 20. 2022. Wilma Segovia 
Wilma Segovia is another gang hitman that was arrested alongside Portillo and even became his cellmate. Segovia was sentenced to, let's just say, life imprisonment, or more specifically, 1,310 years for his crimes. According to that court's ruling, he's surely never coming out. But what sort of crimes did Segovia commit to be sentenced to a life imprisonment of more than a thousand years? Segovia was a major leader in the MS-13. He was a devoted assassin that started pulling death triggers as a child. He moved up the ranks by getting involved in numerous murder cases, most of which he wasn't even suspected in. But what really led to his conviction and his tag as one of the highest ranking hitmen in the MS-13 is that he was a primary suspect in 33 homicides. And if you've been following any of the words I've been saying since the start of this video, then you would already know the MS-13 didn't just kill people, they slaughtered people, cutting them into tiny pieces, leaving them to rot in shallow graves, while taking videos of the disturbing scene as proof for their leaders. Now imagine doing all of that 33 different times. Wilma Segovia killed 33 people, slashing his machete or pickaxe countless times through the thick flesh of men, women, and even children, if they belonged to rival gangs. And that wasn't all. He was also involved in nine different plots to commit murder. This means that he was one of the people that pointed the finger towards who to kill and when. Talk about a mastermind hitman. That's probably why he's the only assassin sentenced to a life imprisonment of more than a thousand years. For Segovia, the court didn't think life imprisonment was good enough. The judge probably wanted to ensure that he would not get out, hence why he was sentenced to over 470,000 days in prison. Tokiro Rodas Ramirez you might not know him by his name, because he goes by many. The first is Tokiro Rodas Ramirez, another is Jose Antonio Rodas Ramirez, and there's also Johnny Rodas Ramirez. But among all these names, the one that stuck was El Perverso. The 41-year-old MS-13 gang leader and hitman was arrested in Honduras back in March 2022, just when he was about to score a goal in a pickup soccer game. Jeez, talk about an anticlimax. The authorities, fully armed, entered the field, stopped the game, and handcuffed him. But the thing is, Perverso was a drug lord, and a very good one at that. What made him very deadly was the fact that he saw everything, even life and death, as just a business deal. If it worked for him, everyone could be dead, and he wasn't following orders. Perverso was one of the leaders, the one calling the shots and taking them too. One time, in mid-2008, Perverso and a few other of his gang members saw a rival gangster riding his bicycle around their apartment complex. Perverso took his gun and chased this rival gangster until he cornered him like a dog. Then he wasted no time in pulling the trigger. In one shot, the man was dead. So, Perverso was not one for small talk. He was the leader of an MS-13 clique. His body is covered in gang tattoos that tell the story of how he rose like the others until he became a full breed deadly hitman for the MS-13. And that's not all. Perverso was so crucial to the gang because he was one of the few who ensured that money stayed in circulation within the transnational organization. So he had to engage in drug trafficking, kidnapping, assault with a deadly weapon, robbery, and of course, homicide. He was set to do anything to keep the gang alive, active, and funded. The star player has since been extradited to the US. The number of death counts El Perverso has to his name means he would probably be sentenced to life in prison. Speaking of death counts, this next man probably has the highest in a single day compared to anyone else on this list. Ever Anibal Rivero Paz during the Christmas season of 2004, Ever Anibal Rivera Paz and a group of other MS-13 gang members fired deadly shots at a bus consisting of about 53 passengers. The gang intercepted the bus and fired shots, scaring passers-by and the passengers. Rivera Paz, who is also known as El Culiche, or the tapeworm, climbed on board for a better aim and fired at anything and anyone that moved, including women and children. 28 people were killed during this attack. There were also 14 seriously injured victims. Many of the passengers stated that they were not sure how long the attack lasted that night. Some passengers said two minutes, while others said five. Alexander, a young father who was on the bus, was shot in the leg and side. The bullets ricocheted around inside his torso. His 23-year-old wife felt his body go limp. She panicked and raised herself up, screaming. A bullet hit her right shoulder first. She was hit again and stopped moving. When Alexander regained consciousness, he still saw nothing. Then he heard one of the attackers moving methodically through the bus. The gunman paused over people who were still breathing. Alexander recalls. He'd ask, are you still alive? Then he would shoot. Alexander checked on his family, his wife still wasn't moving, the baby in her lap was covered in blood. And that's not all there is to Rivera Paz. He wasn't just a professional hitman that decided to shed blood on Christmas. He was also known for his lengthy criminal records, his strategic mobility, different names, fake IDs, different dates of birth, and even up to four cases of deportation. But he keeps coming back to the US. He was also a part of many successful armed robberies. But the most striking thing is that Rivera Paz ordered the hit on the bus to make a point to the government that the MS-13 was there to stay. He gave the green light and carried it out himself. Though Rivera Paz has been deported again, you can be almost sure he's devising a way to return to the US.